Runk. <laughs> Lifeline is an advice show for entertainment purposes only. If you need real help or advice, please seek a therapist or a licensed professional. Hatu, 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 skip it. What is it? Hatu, hatu, skip it up, skip it up, hatu. Hatu, hatu, hat, skip. A quarterback, a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, what is it? I think it's hatu, hatu, skip it up, skip it up, hatu. Hatu, hatu, skip it up, skip it up, hatu. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from Life Stinks with Mel Brooks. And I laughed so hard at that part when I was a kid, when he's trying to pedal for change uh, because he saw the kid doing it and he needs money, right? He needs money. He's like a formerly super rich Beverly Hills yep. producer, maybe even. Okay. And. He's like a shitty guy. Yeah, I know that, right? And, well, I'm telling the audience because we're recording. I know but you know I already know, know that, so okay. skip that part. So That's the kid doing it. That's the kid doing it. And he sees the kid do it. Skitty beam, bam, boom, hop, too. But then Mel does it. Yes. And it sucks ass. And no one gives we him shit. We can't see it on screen, but we can hear it. Yeah, it's not up. Fix that. Fix it. There it there is. There we go. It wasn't even on screen. Now fix it again. Now put it back. You fixed of course, it. You did it wrong. Oh, there we go. now it's just black. Now it's black. Great. There we go. There we go. There it is. There we go. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. This is great. So, so he needs he's, money. He's, he sees this kid being good at it and making money off of it. There he is. This made me laugh hard, dude. Everybody likes it. Thinks he's cute and good. How much did that kid grow up and die of cancer? There we go. Oh yeah, he made the money. Right. All in a day's work, baby. I mean, so taking their time with the scene. It's good. I love it's it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. No, it is good. No, I knew that before you. <laughs> Dude. Hot two, hot two, be bomb boom, hot two. Never mind. Hot two, hot two, be bomb boom, hot two. The guy shaking his head. There's some, there's some punch line hot thing at the end end. Hot two. <laughs> Dude, the the if that were made. Oh wow! Remember that movie? We gotta watch that again. It's a good movie. Remember that, dude? That movie, there was uh, what do you call it? What was it gonna say? Don't remember. Nobody knows but you. God damn it! That movie. Oh, if that movie was made, wow, that was really loud. If that movie was made today, it would be that scene would be so different, huh? You think so? Yeah, it would be cut close to his face. It would show. Oh, his oh face. you mean as a from a filmmaking? Yeah, standpoint, yeah, yeah, from a filmmaking standpoint. Yeah, I mean, like a, if it was a Judd Apatow thing, it would have been like seventy cuts. Yeah, and music yeah. during it. Yeah, and Mel then, Brooks is the genius, dude. Yeah, I don't know why they don't let shit play a lot like that. I watched the internship the other day. Remember? With, oh, uh, with, Vince, with Vaughn? Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. I sent you the clip. Yeah, I never saw that. Vince Vaughn's so funny. I agree. Uh, and Owen Wilson's funny too, but Vince Vaughn, man. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, and that director went on to do some big shit. Who directed it? Sean Levy. You know who he is? Oh yeah. 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 And yeah. that movie is, it has its moments, but I feel like it was like trying to be something that was like, okay, we did Red Dead Crashers. Now let's do this. Definitely. And they that? were both like, we're both salesmen. You guys will thrive off this as actors and improv artists, you know? And it just smelled like that. It was, it was too much of that. It was like produced piece by piece yeah. being like, well, that made money and that yeah, made yeah, money yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. And that's happening right now. But um, anyway, happy New Year! It is uh, the second episode, right? Because New Year's was the first episode Sunday, or what? I don't know. Yeah, and uh, it's the New Year. Uh, but this is the uh, the pop in New Year, the the year as, as Matt said, the year of the Bing Bong, and it's fucking cold in here, huh? I'm hot. I'm not cold at all. I feel like shit though. Shut me down. And Why? the thing about 2023 so far is it's not only the year of the Bing Bong; it's the year of feeling like shit so far for me. And is it because of the, of the rain? No, I mean, almost died at oh, the very yeah, end. I almost threw up. Is it because of the rain? Uh, no, it's not because of the rain. It's because it's because I've had a fucking cold. Oh, really? For too long, mm, too and long. it's not going away. Mm. And every day I wake up and I do the a gross thing. I'm not going to do it right now with my throat and my nose. Okay, you know, yeah. Got to appreciate you doing that. 
it's it has the it's like it's act two act two hey kind of like okay. that yeah yeah uh and it pisses me off yeah so what's going on i'm sure it pisses you, you know? off dude uh and it's too cold and it's too raining and i hate the rain and it's and and it's sadness so that's great it's, i can't stand rain uh it's sadness you know yeah poetry so um anyway dude it's good to be in the year 2023 who knew we would we would fucking make it to 2023 it's tough to make it to 2023 if you made it to 2023 congratulations dude um we got the uh the channel here that you can like and subscribe to um it is uh shadow band 100 percent we're probably gonna have to change the name to make it not yeah. shadow banned 100 yeah. percent because it's fucking awful. We can't we can't break subscribers. Uh, so subscribe. But we got uh, I got Brea um, coming up here in California. I got Portland, Seattle. These are dates. Um, oh wait, when when does this come out? Sunday. So oh, you know what? Tonight I'll be in San Diego. You can get your tickets chrisalia.com. Uh, Jacksonville, San Antonio, uh, Minneapolis. We just added a show. And uh, Sugarland, we're going to be there. Austin, we just added a show. Boise, Columbus, Cincinnati. We got dates all over. And uh, be on the lookout for Salt Lake City is coming up. And I believe uh, somewhere else. I can't remember what it is, but that's coming up. So anyway, I keep adding dates. Chrislea.com. Uh, go to get them tickets. It's a dick, but all good, dude. We don't need oh, it. Oh, you're done? Yeah. If, okay. you, if you have a question, click the link in the description below or go to watchlifeline.com. And uh, we've got that great new Lifeline merch at lifelinemerch.com. Uh, and if you want one-on-one -on -one advice sessions with me, your boy, your bing bong boy, Matt D'Elia, uh, go to mattdelia.com. I've been giving good advice to all you people who've been making sessions with me. Uh, I would say 95% of the time, I feel like they're very, very productive. Oh. And there's always that 5% where I'm like, there was one session where I literally, literally had no, no idea what the guy was saying the entire time. Whoa. He was, he was speaking English? Uh, yeah, well, he was. He was just, the words didn't go together like I'm oh, assuming wow. he thought they were. But he was just like a fully unwell guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and but what besides him, it was all okay, good. Okay, okay, cool. So, all right. Okay. Yeah, I, can't, I don't want to air it out too yeah, much yeah, yeah. because he was, he was like sweet, but something was just Got wrong. Got it. I hope he's know? okay. And I'm, I'm unqualified to help with that. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Not me. I'm qualified. No, you're not. Dude, you know what you should do? Call me in those situations. What situations? Where you don't understand somebody, dude. I can get to the fucking bottom of it. Mm -hmm. I'm chilled, dude. No. I'm chilled right now. Chilled? Yeah, I'm just chilled, dude. That's not the right way to say that. I and I'm not going to lie. I didn't get good sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you? No, actually, I didn't got get really good sleep. bad sleep. I, I I normally get good sleep. Didn't get good sleep, and upset and I'm upset about it. So uh, yeah. we really hope that you guys are getting good sleep. Keep take, take take care of your mental health. You know what I mean. Take care of your sleep schedule. That's the most important thing. And uh, and that's that, man. Take what? naps. Let's bring back naps in 2023. Dude. Uh, yeah, I used to take naps, and then I moved, and in the house I live now, I do not take naps, and it's the house's fault. Yes, you, dude. There's nowhere to nap in that house. Except in the bed, I guess. But I nap on couches. But where I'm saying in your in the house that you live in now, I have a couch. there's no good place to nap. You know why? Why? Because it's always 97 degrees in your house. Dude, I you love it. You are a fucking orchid. You live in a hot house. It's horrible. I live in an. I, 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 well. And it's not that house. It's any yes. house or any room that you have the control of, of the temperature. It's too cold always. N but maybe I have a fucking arm deficiency or something, but I don't I eat so much salmon, dude. I, you know, I keep it lean and like, it's crazy, dude. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, you like it disgustingly warm. Calvin loves pasta and we ate pasta last night and it was so fucking cute, dude. He's like, no, I want Parmesan cheese. Uh huh. And he kept on wanting Parmesan cheese. And I kept having to put Parmesan cheese on the thing. And that's how you know he's a Dalia. You know how dad and I do it. Let's be honest. What? Everyone's kid is only cute to them. No. Because saying, I want Parmesan cheese alone isn't cute. Yes, it is, dude. It is if your kid is cute. And some kids are fucking so cute and some kids are not cute. And my sure. kid is so cute. If a dude. kid is cute, then everything they do is cute. Right, but my kid is But top only when they do it. Like when somebody tells a story like, oh. my kid was like, I want Parmesan cheese. It's like, okay. Okay, but you know Calvin, so just imagine him doing it. You're welcome. That sounds very nice, doesn't I've it? I've seen him do that. Yep. Yeah. So it's so cute. Uh, anyway. Yeah, he's. I mean, Cal is super cute. Yeah. And he has a fucking cut here, and he keeps picking it, and we had to put a Band-Aid on it. 
He's had it for so long, it looks story. like it's like a birthmark. I know. It, she just won't stop picking it, dude. And he'll wake up in the... <laughs> I'll, I'll go in the morning, get him in from his crib, and he'll be like, I picked my boo-boo. Oh, and I'm really? Like, Calvin, I tell you not to pick it. So anyway, we make him sleep with the Band-Aid on now. Whatever. That's how it goes. And so it goes, and so it goes. Terrible. Round... <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Where it, what is it? Round and I round. I don't even know what no you're doing. No one knows. No one likes and, it. What? No one likes it. No, that song. That song is fucking banging, dude. No one likes what you're doing. Do you know who it is? Billy no. Joel. And so oh, it yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it goes. Why do you do every song like you're Josh Groban? Because you. Because Josh that's my style. Josh Groban, my ass, dude. Because that's my style, dude. And and when that's you, a terrible style. It is especially because someone else already has it, and he's Josh Groban, my ass. So, <laughs> that's so dumb dude all right so josh groban is very good at what he does Let's i just agree put it down there, okay? but don't we don't need two josh groban I'm masses not, i'm not doing it like josh groban i'm inspired like josh groban and 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 i have inspirations just like i do with my comedy right jim carrey Eddie murphy that's my inspiration i'm not like them but i grew up on them and since i grew up on josh groban even though we're the same age now when you i started doing my singing grow up on josh groban, i grew up on ass? eddie murphy uh Jim Carrey and Josh Groban. Okay. And so it goes. <laughs> and and one of the things that I learned is when you really hit the fucking hard notes, and so it goes, and you got to fucking pull back because it gets loud in people's ears. Yeah, if only you pulled back so far, you were on the other side of the wall. That's dick. Shall okay. we? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's okay. do it. Hi, Chris. Hi, Matt. I absolutely adore the shit out of the both of you, but I will cut to the chase because this one's kind of long. Oh. So my upstairs neighbor wakes me up at 7 a.m. on the dot every single day, mm. Monday through Sunday. It doesn't matter. Um, and it's because their dog barks, howls, oh. cries, and runs around in the mornings. And as I'm sure we all know by now, there's nothing more obnoxious than being woken up against your own will. Like, it's one thing if you have to set an alarm for a certain time to wake up, but it's another thing if you're woken up by, like, a lawnmower outside or somebody waking you up when you fall asleep on the couch mm. or, in my case, when a dog is barking. Mm. Um, and I work from home. I just feel like it sets the tone for my day really wrong because I wake up pissed off. Yes. And I already sent a message to my leasing office. Not that I expect them to get like evicted, but I just wanted them to send an anonymous tip and be like, hey, you guys are being kind of loud. Yeah. Clearly it didn't fucking work. So I feel like I have to take matters into my own hands, but I'm not a confrontational person. Like it's not my nature to be like, hey, you got you fuck it, you know? Yeah. So I was thinking of maybe writing a letter. I don't know if there's a way to like spin move out of this, but I it's to a point so. now where it's ruining my peace because I can also hear them doing like the horizontal mambo late at Whoa, night and like plus. walking around. Like it's just very annoying. I mean, okay, so the dog barking. I got an. I got a really good. I dude. I got a really good idea. Do you want to go first? And, and it's just very simple. Okay. Get a fucking sound machine. Uh -huh. Crank it up and put it near your head. On your head? Yep. Put it. Tape it to the uh, front of your head. Turn it on and just hear waves, dude. A sound machine is really great. Also, do you use one? I know, but I do use earplugs. Those like don't the, work at all for me. Okay, well they work for me. You s it's probably because your ears are fucked up in some way. Or My not. ears are fucked up. But, oh, okay. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Hers are not, probably, in and mine are not. So if you just ball them up, ball, ball, ball them up, bing bong, in the ear, <laughs> and they just, you make them small, and then you put them in there, and yeah. then they expand, right. and you can't hear anything. But really? beyond that, if you want, the neighbor at 7 a.m. with the dog, you can't be, uh, okay, when you live in an, any kind of apartment complex or right. whatever, like on, on, on top of one another, right. you can't have something that is waking other people up yeah, at obscene hours i agree seven isn't obscene like to everyone but it is to a lot of people it's especially on weekends it's too early yeah and like you gotta that person has to figure out how to make their dog stop annoying their neighbors mm. or get a house mm. You know or, what I'm saying? Or be on the streets. Or the, well, you don't want to have a dog live on the streets. That's that's not nice. Right. Or right. also, you don't want to live on the streets. But but, um, but a person can make that choice. A dog. Dogs are kind of. They should be out on the streets, though. Honestly. Uh, I mean, that's. Let's face it. They come from wolves. Okay, I learned that, that from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Nothing. That means nothing. They aren't wolves anymore. They're completely defenseless. And okay, but they would all die if they got let out on the I streets. I know, but dogs. Well, there's probably enough trash in L.A. at least. To okay. fucking for them to eat. Anyway, but I'm just saying I dogs think the thing wolves. to do also, besides taking measures that you can do to your for yourself, mm. I think you write them a note, mm. tape it on their door. You don't need to knock and confront them. Right. If you're not confrontational, it's not like a scaredy cat move or something. No. You're totally free to do that. I've done I've done both. Mm. Both work. Uh both piss people off, but who cares? Like yeah. this is your sleep. Like 
Chris was just talking about. Like, yeah. Your sleep matters. Be nice about it, though, in the letter. This way, this is what I like to do. Okay. Be nice about it in the letter. Uh -huh. This way, if they're a dick back, you go like this. I tried. Now the gloves come off. You get a stool, and late at night, you stand up, and you, sh you, you know, angle your... And so it goes, and so it goes, round and round, no one knows, or whatever the lyrics are. And she so they, probably doesn't want to do that, and nobody wants to do that, and no. Billy Joel and I probably want to do it, but uh, yeah, I, you know. And I think that singing warfare, those two things, you know, takes things, uh, measures that, you know, will make it easier for you to sleep on your own with mm. the earplugs or the sound machine, whatever, uh, and also write a note. Write a note to mm -hmm. him. So you have so you have ears that work when you put the thing, those orange ones, right? Mine are blue. Okay. So you painted them. So you put them <laughs> in your ear and then they expand, right? Yes. And then uh They're like foam. Yeah, I understand. I've tried it and they don't fall out. No. No. The whole, the whole night. Oh my shit is like it'll be in for thirty minutes. But I have AirPods and they're in my ears and then all of a sudden they're not in my ears. No. So your ear the holes in your ears it's, are too big? Especially one of them, I think it just slopes down and it just falls out. Yeah. Yeah, you have faulty ears. Those those orange She doesn't don't have faulty work. ears, I would imagine, and I certainly don't have faulty ears. Do those orange thingies work for you guys? Leave a comment. Thingies. Because I don't those those earplugs. Yeah, earplugs. Because they don't work for me, dude. So I want to know if they work for you because I want to know if my ears are fucked up or if it's like a large pop, uh, part of the population that just can't use those fucking things. No, they're cheap and they're effective and they're great. Otherwise, they wouldn't sell. Nobody would buy them if they I mean, always fucking didn't work for everybody. But that's not true because it is a, a bit of a sucker gift, right? Like it is a bit of a sucker thing you see and like, oh, cool. And then you get it and it doesn't work. But oh, well, they already got your fucking six ninety nine. A sucker gift? Who's gifting people? Uh, for ear yourself, I'm saying. Oh, you give you say, oh, I, I deserve a treat, right? Because oh, this I is mean, fucking you know? not necessarily something I need, but it might need, be nice to have earplugs, and then you put it in, and then it doesn't work; it falls out. I'm wondering if it happens to you, so leave a comment. No, but what sometimes will happen is that it'll expand in the wrong way, mm -hmm. and it'll leave room for unauthorized sounds to get through. All okay? the yeah, and when I want the the uh, the unauthorized sounds, they sneak in. Yeah. So what you have to do, what I have to do sometimes, is take it out. Ball, 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 ball it up, up bing bong, and put it right back in there. It, 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 the, it, the, it, I, the way I do it always has unauthorized sound when it comes in. Oh. It always sneaks in. And then also, it always falls out. You know, you can get large ones or like extra. I, I didn't know that, but I feel like those will just really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's like the normal sized, and then there's large ones for people that have fucked up heads like you. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess we could do that. Yep. Should I get a haircut? No, I mean... You, you think I mean, it looks nice? Whatever. I think I need to get a trim. I'm going to get a trim. Whatever. I'm going to get a trim, and uh, I'll have it next time you see me, and then also I'm bringing Calvin to get his first fucking hair, haircut, professional haircut, because I do it. Wait, me and Kristen do it. And you're saying that's going to stop now, and you're going to take him to an actual barber? The, this is the first time I'm going to do it. Okay. And I want to see, you know, I want to see him look like a real, like, handsome, like a cool cut. Yeah, okay. But I feel like my hair's kind of good, but then when I cut my hair, and then I look back, I'm like, my hair was too long. What the fuck was I doing? Oh, I know what you mean. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I never um, you don't get my haircut, much. so I don't. I don't know what to say. Mm, okay, well, I think I'm looking kind of good though. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm insecure. Whatever. I'm. I'm. I, you know, I want acceptance always yeah. from everybody. Okay. I well, live in fear. Uh, Ever okay. since I was a little kid. Okay. Well, so uh, relax. Yeah. And I just want people to know. I want people to tell me I'm good. I'm okay as I am. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Right. Very nice woman that just called in and that sucks but mm -hmm. try the earplugs maybe the sound machine if it's, i don't know those might be expensive uh and then write a note and if the note response is either nothing happens or they're rude to back to you you might have to mm -hmm. suck it up and mm -hmm. bing bong knock on the door and then when i'm in my car and i do affirmations out loud sometimes when i do the i'm worthy of love one i start crying so let's go to the next one <laughs> What's up, Chris and Matt? What's up? I have what I think is a hot button topic. Okay. You know, some of those like really important issues. Yeah, I know what the hot button topic solved. is. And um, I think those are the worst. I've had this ever issue where I watch television and <laughs> film. I think they're dope. Movies, whatever. Pretty... And I've seen it happen so much where. Um, Nobody ever says goodbye when they hang up on the oh, phone. Oh, dude, I in hate movie, that. In movies, film, um, television, I don't understand. Like, it seems so fucking cool to do, but also at the same time, it seems like such a 
asshole yeah. thing to do. So dick, um, dude, I always think it is. And also at the same time, I just don't understand why it's like so broad spectrum across yeah, like, that's true, all yeah. of yeah. films. Like, are people meeting together? Is there like some sort of rule? Like you can't have people say goodbye when they <laughs> hang up the phone <laughs> on television or film? It's in every actor's um, contract. Please help me understand this. Obviously, I'm probably not gonna hang up on people, but may, I don't know, maybe I'll try it out for a little try bit. Try it out. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts. Thank change you. the world, try I, it out. Maybe you'll change the world. I notice this all the time. I love this dude, what an observation. I always think of this. It's so annoying. And and the other, they never cut to the other person on the other line like, <laughs> oh. Like, dude. All right, I'll I gotta see you. say, I don't think I've noticed it the way you guys are talking. Oh, about really, it. Yeah. dude? Well, I've first noticed of all, it, but I've never been like, what? In you know every, what first of all, any badass movie, nobody says bye. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I have worked out in my head: why they do it. Okay. It's just unnecessary yes. for the filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You We're, just want it to keep moving. Yeah. You want real life? Go look at somebody on their cell phone. Right. You want to see Denzel be the fucking shit? You don't. You hear him say, okay, great. I got the instructions for the assassination. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I got instructions for the assassination. That sounds that's a that's a good writing. Oh, so let's put it this way. Let, let's let's understand something. Nobody ever actually really says bye once, even on the phone in real life. Right? Meaning what? You, you mean you say more than once? You go like this. All right, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll see you later. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh-huh. I'll see you. All right. This sounds good. Yep. Ah, uh, bye. Imagine but again, but again, doing but again that. that would suck and it would be boring and we right. don't want real life when we go to the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the thing I hate that's kind of similar, mm -hmm. but I, I have one too. Go a ahead. better observation than that even is it's exclusive to TV. Movies don't do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. The scene will, for all intents and purposes, end. Right. But the camera will linger. Yep on one or maybe even sometimes both of the of the actors involved in the scene. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like, the child is missing, and the other person's like, oh my God, is he really? And then the other person will be like, but maybe I know where the child is. And then it'll cut to the back to the other person, and it'll be like three more seconds yeah. just being like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the scene's done, dude. Dude, the what are you, why, why are you doing that? Because in the script, it says, off of Karen's reaction, we smash cut to. But it could be way I shorter. I know. I nobody know. does. I mean, if you want to talk about nobody does that in real life, conversations keep going. Nobody, at the end of every big moment right, in the conversation, right, right. people don't just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, a good yeah. actor, so what I just did was probably really good, but... Yeah, every scene that Scott Bakula has ever been in... Definitely Scott Bakula. ...has Bakula. had that happen, yeah. especially NCIS, dude. I love Scott Bakula. Oh, he's in one of those. Have you seen it? Is it New Orleans? I've yeah. never seen it, no. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yo, it's... What's up with it? It's fantastic. Oh, it's good? Dude, so, first of all, his name is... D pull up his name. Dude, he it's is like Dwight a, Hammer or something yeah, sick. It is Dwight. It is? Yep. Oh my God. Or, oh no, you know what it is? Dwayne. Oh wow. What Damn. is the name of it? Dwayne. He's what what you want to do is look up yeah, the right thing. Yeah, look up the thing and then he's doing all it. What is it? NCIS. Uh, Dwight, Dwayne. And say, uh, why isn't it the, oh, there it is in the, the fifth one, the fifth one right there. No, 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 the picture. The picture? The picture. No, now we go down. <laughs> say it, he said. What we're doing is we're pissing me off. Yeah, well, okay. I'm getting oh, okay. furious. <laughs> okay. Especially because he forgot his microphone, so now we can't even hear him. Right, right, right. So Scott Bavacula, you know. <laughs> Character name. Scott Character Baklava. Character name. Scott Baklava. Scott Baklava. There we go. Dwayne. Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. Wow. Dwayne Pride. Dude, here's the thing. Wow. They don't even call him that. They call him King. <laughs> King. Why? <laughs> Why? Is it ever explained? Hey, King. Like, is his nickname? That's his Or is he, he has like a crown like the, off to the side the, of his in head? The, in the streets. They say, we found the kid that cut to him like this. He's got the, the crown. 
<laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, it is. And then they got that other guy in it, the guy who always acts like this, the Lucas guy who's in who's the Fast that? and Furious. That's not normal. Go, go to the oh, thing, Lucas uh, Black. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's his wait, name wait, in it? Who's the comedian? Lucas, Lucas. Black. Lucas, no, you're thinking of uh, someone else. <laughs> Let, uh, oh, 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 this guy's in the NCIS. What's his name? Lucas Black. There he is. Who's the guy I'm thinking of, though? Uh, uh, the guy who talks like this, the comedian. Yeah. Uh, why don't we know? Lewis, Lewis Black. Black. Imagine yeah, if yeah, he yeah. was in NCIS, dude. <laughs> Dwayne Pride. <laughs> Call me King. Um, so his crown keeps falling off because he's all jittery. Um, <laughs> so Lucas Black, he, oh, every time he talks, he talks like this. And he's like, well, King, I'll figure it out. Well, who's Daryl Mitchell's character's name? Patton Plame? Oh, dude. Da What's that guy's name? Pa pa okay. Right above Mark. No. That guy, Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, is named what? Peril. Hold on a second, though. In the opening credits of NCIS, mm -hmm. L New Orleans, Daryl Mitchell, when his name, when his title card comes up in the beginning, mm -hmm. it doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't say Daryl Mitchell, okay. even though that's his name. Yeah, it is. What it says is Daryl Chill Mitchell. What the f fuck is dude, going on it, with this show it, uh, dude that's so dope he is dude. so chill and here's the thing he plays a guy in a wheelchair and i was like wow that's fucking probably they would it probably change that insane. now they'd probably get a real guy who did a real with then i looked it up he is in a wheelchair that's dope and and that is chill dude yeah that is chill but he so, goes by chill yeah dude watch well, Scott that's, that's sick look, to be like that yeah. look at look at that's that's not the guy zoe mcclellan look at this guy that's neil brennan they chill, chill mitchell, mitchell! Oh, dude. Uh, unbelievable wow. dude honestly i'm matt chill delia yeah yeah oh so. yeah and so okay so so it's all good so here's the deal that is about uh ncis wow dude uh which by the way nobody knows what it is ncis right like it has to do with the navy or some shit and it's like okay right but it's always is ncis it, is, is always is it's the NCIS crimes for, that yeah. have to do with the sea and the navy and shit. What? That's so yeah, it, narrow. It's so weird. There dude. should be three episodes. Uh, it's like well, ever. It's it's like there was there, these these fish robbed the bank. I don't know what the fuck. The but, fish robbed the bank. But so and so we gotta go get a bunch of a bunch of fucking uh, barracudas went to go. They they're they're in a crime ring, and so um, so this is everything that has to do with the naval criminal investigative service. I can't believe how successful it is. I mean, Mark Harmon, who's in the first one, is obviously worth eighty-five billion dollars. Yes, um, he's hundred and seven. And so the the but CIS was first, right? CIS was oh, first. Oh, that was it? CIS or CSI? No, CSI. Crime, Crime scene, scene investigation. investigation. Yeah. Okay. CIS. So, what the fuck? Okay, so so they 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 have a an office, or I don't know what you'd call it, the offices of the investigative. I think you call it an office. Yeah, but like it's not a precinct, right? Like it's called something, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway. I've never seen the show. Okay, so King? dude, it is the most decked out, chillest shit. It's in like an old abandoned, fucking right. refurbished place that would be so dope to live for a bachelor. Right. And dude, there's a kitchen in it, and Dwayne Pride, aka King's thing is, he's always cooking for everyone, every, you know why? everyone else. Because he's like he's probably like a Cajun guy yep. in the show. Yep. And it's like that's what we do in New Orleans. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. Wow, what a dumb stereotype. Anybody want andouille? That's how everything right, right, starts. Right, right. He's like, anybody want andouille sausage? Andouille. Andouille? Andouille, dude. What is it, andouille? And, and, what is it? Andouille. 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 Anybody want andouille sausage? Andou uh, ratatouille? Uh, anybody want andouille sausage? Andouille sausage? What's the, what's the thing that uh, New Orleans is famous Crawdad. for? Crawdad, crawfish. Crawfish, uh, Cajun. Cajun. Creole. Creole, Creole. Creole yep. yeah. Got some Creole oatmeal going on in the morning. Wow. Um, we'll give you diarrhea so bad. <laughs> Chill Mitchell's like, nah, not that. And so, um, yeah, so that's what it's about. And it's just fucking amazing. And he's always cooking in the beginning and at the end. Can like, dude, he is investigating murders and, and also waking up to cook dope shit. And his name's Dwayne Pride and he goes by King. So I want to know, is Daryl Mitchell, is he only Daryl Chill Mitchell in NCIS? I don't know. Or is he Daryl Chill Mitchell in everything? I don't know. Can we find that out? I don't know. But like the guy's been in a lot of stuff and he's killing it. Oh, well then let's let's find out for sure. Does he go yeah. by Daryl Chill Mitchell in everything? Because if he does, he's figured out life way better than anybody else. I gotta have a middle name like that. Oh, go to his Instagram. Maybe it says Daryl Chill Mitchell in it. It doesn't come up as anything else, though. No, it does. Yeah, yeah, oh! yeah, 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 yeah. Daryl Chill Mitchell. It's it's his Instagram <laughs> handle. It is, dude. The hat in the second one. <laughs> 
Is that him? A condom. Is that him? I think, yeah. Wow, look at this fucking stuff, What's he saying? dude. Who knows? Wow. Yeah, I know we can't play that, but how, how much? Anyway, he's the shit. I mean, guy's got so much money from that, you know? Well, good for him. Yeah, good for him for sure. He figured out life. He got people to call him Daryl Chill Mitchell yeah. on the on the on Damn. the intro. Oh, he's in Sergeant Bilko, dude. How does a guy who has he's been in a lot of stuff. yeah for a paralyzed guy? That's that's he's the best paralyzed actor. I mean, unless he it happened and he's kept on acting. He's in something called Lifeline. Really? Yeah. Scroll down. We should get him on the show. Oh, that's hilarious. There it is. Oh wow. 2017. The fuck Lifeline. is that about? Two guys give advice. <laughs> Oh wow! Look at that. I don't know a single person in that show. That's either. cool. Oh, cool. Has a three point nine. Oh, out of five. No. Uh, all right. Let's let's do let's do another one. Yeah, this is yeah. enough. This is enough. We about, went fucking about up, but King. it's fun to do that though. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, the, the sexiest man I've ever seen in my life. David hey, Arquette. Man, um, I have a situation. <laughs> <laughs> so stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Making how much? Shit. How much is he making a world-ending robot? Um, <laughs> and it'll pan out. And no, I'll dude, like, he's currently making this video stranded somewhere, and he's making something that will save his life. This guy is hilarious, and the shit, and the fact that he's fixing something off-screen is absolutely unfucking believable. You know who this guy is? He's David the Shit Arquette. That's who that is. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm having a difficult time. Uh, Evil villain. Mm -hmm. Explaining what. I'm gonna kill someone. Sub bitch means. Uh, okay. To Good. him, and there's so many nuances to it That's true. that I'm learning. He's right. Like, like if you're mowing the lawn, mm -hmm. and you know, at the end when you're doing the little little triangles and like turning like, oh, these bitch, little yeah. it's a bitch yeah. right you know it's a bitch but very, also very good i've come to like realize i feel like you know your ego is the bitch too yeah like, yeah 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 oh it's so bitch to be like bitching about something mm -hmm. sure but it comes across so judgmental mm. to people who yeah okay yes. yeah okay let's discuss uh here it is judgmental because it kind of is, yeah, you sure. know? Yeah. But I've like, no, love keep the little guy's great. It's a bitch in me because it's the best teacher of what needs to grow and change. Wow. So and philosophical. Beautiful man. <laughs> I'm trying to like, communicate that to somebody and I'm having a really hard time because there's so many different examples yeah. of. Switch. There's so many different. It's a bitch I was using the screwdriver. Meaning of the shit. It, he is but a great example of a bitch equals the shit. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I am judging bitch. myself for being a bitch, uh -huh. but it's also like I love myself. Yeah, there you go. So I'm yeah, not yeah, taking yeah. it so seriously. There's no way around being a bitch. Everybody's a bitch. Everybody's when someone bitch. says something, like, hey, you really hurt my feelings with something. Oh. No. Right, and if I went, oh, you didn't understand what I mean. It's a bitch. Sure, dude. yeah, in a way. Bitch. In a way, in a way. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to, I mean, the I love the term because it's, it's helped me so much, mm -hmm. but I'm not like condemning myself when I see that little ego, that little bitch that wants to, hey, I'm right. Okay, we get it. We get know? it. Get it. Uh, uh, here, here's the way to, in terms of explaining it to mm -hmm, other people, mm -hmm, the thing that mm -hmm. people get tripped up on mm -hmm. is that they think if you say a bitch about something they do, they think you're calling them a, a bitch. bitch. Yeah. Moreover, they think it has anything to do, and I understand why they would think this. Mm -hmm. They think it has something to do with like the, when men call w women. Oh, they do a bitch, which oh. is totally not at all what it is. Mm, yeah, no. It has nothing to do with that. No. So it's good to be able to clear that up. But it's it's the lawnmower example was perfect it was because great. it's like. Or like when you're carrying something irregular and you're trying to fit through a doorway. You're doing the lawnmower and you're like, it's like your arms here. don't fit around yeah. the thing it's and you're bit. trying to, right. that's a bitch. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So that has nothing to do with the derogatory term bitch mm -hmm. ever. It ne in fact, if you use it that way, that's absolutely incorrect and, and you're fired. I was, ball. yeah, I was a bitch yesterday. I, I, I'm, and I don't know if I was a bitch today yet, but I would say I'm probably a bitch at least once a day. Yeah. Do you ever... Do you ever notice that you are being doing something that is a bitch when you're alone and you laugh? Any you laugh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You don't have because you wish somebody saw it, so yeah, you I could you say "sub bitch" uh, to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for and sure. I want to explain it to you, but you can't explain it to somebody. You got to show it to them, and then you're not right. doing it right. Even though if I'm a great actor, if it's really it. funny, you can explain it. Yes, because true, then yes. you you can really convey <laughs> the "sub bitch." You just think it's someone like toppling over with books yeah. or something. Yeah, um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with "sub bitch" because we are all "sub bitch." Yes, all of us "sub bitch." Remember when Dad fell when he was trying to do the magician thing? When he was no, but I remember. Yeah, yeah. That was that's not falling though. He fell. Fell later, but uh, he was, uh, look at this was yeah. the best thing. That well, the I, whole thing was a bitch. But look at this was the funniest thing that I've ever Didn't seen. Did he in my fall life. both them? Did, did, did he fall? Wasn't that the thing he fell? Mm. He fell. He was going. We was we were playing a game. Yeah. Where he had to say we had to guess magician, but he couldn't say what the it was word like. Was, tab that taboo was, yeah. or whatever. Something. Like and that. he was. It wasn't and, taboo, but it was like taboo. And he was trying to. <laughs> do like a voila thing yeah i in my memory he fell while he was doing it got up and then goes look at this. oh my god really <laughs> and it was so i bitch. thought the fall was separate and oh. i just thought look at it all i remember is <laughs> <laughs> look at this like what's such a Say a thing a, a magician says, like abracadabra. He, he or probably something. couldn't say abracadabra. Right, or right, right, like, right. That was right. one of the was, words. Yeah. Okay, oh, fuck. Yeah. He just said, look at this. The worst magician, you know? <laughs> <laughs> look at this. He kind of fucking cut a girl in half. Look at this. Okay, He's so. Like, look what I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I would say. So, 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 what are you laughing at specifically right now? <laughs> Tell me what you're laughing at specifically, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh fuck! I'm laughing at a magician. If a magician really did a trick <laughs> and said, "Look at this," but I'm also laughing at the way Dad did it. It was so funny, dude. It was, yeah. Oh, um, oh fuck! We laughed. And so, all right. So, yeah. So, bitch is a great fucking thing. It calls people out, but in a lo it's it's a loving thing, dude. Just tell them it's a loving thing. I know. I mean, maybe they get offended, but Clear it's not. You're not, it's not. We're taking the word and owning the word. It's not bitch. What it means, actually, it doesn't mean female dog. It's it's not a derogatory thing for women. Yeah. It, we're taking that word and saying, "Wow, you really look insecure the way you're moving around yeah, like that." Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Or or like overwhelmed, but physically, yeah, yeah, by overwhelmed physically, swallowed at the wrong time in the conversation. They're trying to do something awkward. Yep. That requires your body to move in a, uh, a bitch Teetering position. in any way, physically, it's a bitch. That requires you to, uh, it's a bitch. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Let's see what's up. That was good, yeah. Good, great question. Hey, Matt and Chris. Love the pod. Hope so you guys close. are doing well. I'm seeking some dating and relationship advice. Hey, and I met this girl. We were going on dates, really hitting it off, doing the horizontal mambo. Life was ripping for about a month. Sounds good. Uh, we were spending four or five days in a row hanging out each week, which became exhausting, and I told her I think we're spending too okay. much time together. Mistake. It was indelicate how I said it, and it came out at the wrong time. Yep. Um, I really hurt her feelings, and she told me I'm a bad purse and that she doesn't want to see me again. <laughs> Two weeks quick. later, she reached out. We met up and talked. She apologized. We agreed we wanted things to be back to how they were. Um, but ever since then, it's been about three or four weeks. The hangouts have been infrequent. It doesn't feel the same. Her texts have been dry, and she's been leaving me on red. I was curious, should I reach out and see you know, how she's feeling? Um, and if this happened to you, how'd you handle it, and how'd it pan out? Yeah, thanks. Okay, wait, before we even get into that, leaving someone on red, I want to talk about this. Yeah, I think yeah, about yeah, this sometimes. Yeah, yeah. People, are, me water. people yeah. are always like, oh, I'm going to leave them on red, like show them something, this or oh. that. Let them, oh, let them oh, suffer yeah, on red. That, yeah. It's just like, Leaving somebody on red. You know who leaves shit on red? People who have a life, dude. Could be. Could be. Like I don't respond right away to any of any people who text me. Yeah. And I, I also don't have red receipts, which is change it for everyone. Don't ever have that. But like, I I don't know. I don't I don't mm. find that insulting if someone read my text three hours or three days before and hasn't responded yet. Mm. I'm codependent though, so I do. Okay. Well, I don't. So I'm smarter and have it more figured out than you so that's the final word on that part yeah but but this guy i knew what when he was saying it that that was a huge mistake why why do people do that why are people like what like this guy why is does he say oh maybe we're seeing each maybe maybe we're moving too fast maybe or maybe we're seeing each other too much like what you're you're seeing each, 
her because you want to. Yeah. So if you want to, why would you even want to scale back in the first place? Like, there's no like well, set ideal of how often yeah. you see somebody. You see somebody the amount that you want to see them. Yeah. So why would he? Well, he either in in all like do all due respect, fuck it up by saying because he's fearful avoidant, or he is uh, he he doesn't like her that, that much. But he obviously does. Sure, yeah. But maybe sometimes it takes it take. Well, okay, so if he's somebody who keeps people at a distance because he's scared uh, because his walls are up, if that's what it is, then he should say that to her so that he has an explanation for saying that. He pro- but there's many people who are like that that don't know they're like that. Okay, well, congratulations. Now you know. Say that in the text. Say say like I don't know why I said that. That was stupid. There Not you. only did it come out wrong, mm-hmm. but like I think I had some like fear of wearing myself out on like with you and I don't I'm scared to wear myself out with you so like mm. hopefully I was wrong I, I I don't know what I was thinking it was mm. a stupid thing to say like obviously things were good then if we could get back to where we were that would mm. be amazing I, I'm sorry is yeah you th- so you think he's I wasn't really clear is you think he he, he so he wants to he, does he want it to get back to the way it was yeah it okay. seems like it to me yeah yeah I guess it did seem like that yeah just say that say like yo I don't know why I said that I jumped the gun I think I was being a little bit of fear a little bit fearful I was insecure or whatever but uh I noticed your texts have been dry lately and if it's because of a reaction because of that because you think you need to be that way because I said that I understand but let me take accountability and responsibility for that so uh, and tell you that that isn't what I meant it, it and isn't wanted. what I meant I was being, you know, not true to myself. I was scared, and uh, I'd love to, you know, uh, stop that shit and let's move and let's move forward. Yeah. Or laughing that hard made me tired, man. Wow. Yeah. Or you know, maybe you're just you don't want to be with her. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, he does though. He wouldn't I, do I, this. I, I understand, but I'm just trying to think. Like if I like, I would have never done that. Well, I'm a different. I'm not fearful of void, and I'm very, uh, I'm very codependent. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Take Matt's advice. Just, yeah, take my advice. A baby. Hey, what's up, Everything man? Chris, and love the show. An actual we'll get right baby into it. is the so, same color. The other night, four months old. I was with this girl that I've known for a few weeks, and, you know, things escalated. We was going to do the horizontal mamba. Nice. But she told me, oh, I don't like condoms oh. when I pulled out the rubber. Oh. And I'm like, Rapping. wow. Rapping. Aren't you worried about having a kid, sure. STDs? Great. Da-da-da. She's like, oh, I'm on birth control. Don't worry. I get checked all the time. I'm clean. What about you? So I just wanted to know what you boys would do in this situation. Are you telling her, hey, sorry, I got to keep myself protected, can't do it? Great question. Or is it like, depends on the scale of if she's a bombshell or wow. like, sure. you know. Yeah, uh, it could. It, dep- it all depends. Just save the world. Just shit his pants in the middle. You know, like a <laughs> one versus ten. Are, are you, you going in raw with the ten? Or is it just a no deal all around? Got to protect yourself. Got to stay clean. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. If if go ahead. If you ask something, gotta to be say. clean. You gotta yeah. be. Clean. Uh, yeah. You gotta be clean. Here's the deal, though. If you don't have your own car, you can do it. Because what she might be better hell? off than you, and then like you guys can figure out life together. Because it sucks if you don't have a car. Oh, you're saying you can hitch your wagon to someone who has is there better off than you if you have a baby. But is he? It's birth control. He said. But he's talking about well, yeah. But uh, here's the this thing: this is not news, but people be lying. Okay, but here's the thing: if someone says that to you, yes, you, yes, in this case, it's the woman. She's saying, "I've been tested and I'm on birth control." Mm-hmm. But like, what about? Sorry to break it to you, all the guys out there, you're not the only one that this woman might be having sex with. Mm-hmm. So like. Not even in a distrustful right, way, right, just right. in a, like a safe way. Yeah, you just always want to wear a condom. If it's mm-hmm. your if it's your partner and you guys are exclusive, obviously, yeah, yeah, then yeah. who cares? But like, I mean, ah. But but if he's talking ten, you just met somebody. But he's talking. He's with a ten. Why does that matter? I don't even understand. Because you get to it's be... the same exact thing biologically. Yeah, I know, you can I know get that. something and you can get someone pregnant and a lot of if things. If you don't have your own car and if you live with a roommate and you're 29 or up, up above that and you have a 10. That's not happening though because you're 29, have a roommate and don't have a car. It depends on where you are, dude. If you're in the fucking, the, 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 if you live in a swampland, you know what I mean? If you live, if you're on a bayou and like you just got the dime there by mistake, like what the fuck? Like have by you seen mistake. Letter Kenny? The fucking can, can, show in Canada, like there's people they live in the middle, in the middle of nowhere, and there's a really hot, you know, chick in it. All right, I mean that's an extreme. But I'm just saying though, like, 
you 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 knock her up by mistake and you don't have a car and you live with a roommate she all of a sudden makes you look good and we're elevated right and then all of a sudden all right it's like the fucking secret or you made your own vision board but by the, nutting the don't worry i'm on birth control is a there's a glaring hole in that statement yes. because what about other things well no but also i'm not babies. just worried about children i get it you're not going to get hiv and pretty much everything else is whatever curable except for herpes but here's the deal you're just chill about stis why no but well i mean herpes is the bad one and then otherwise you can just kind of take a pill right yeah but it's like i mean what i'm what are you talking what, about? what i'm you worried I mean? about more is uh people be lying first of all about the birth control and then second of all sometimes women will be like i take birth control and they take it every day but not every day at 10 a.m they take it at 10 a.m they take it at 3 p.m they take it at, and then the pill doesn't know what to do and oopsie daisy i let my fucking soldiers in there and now we've got a kid but all of the everything we're saying actually doesn't matter right. whether it's you're afraid of an, getting an std or getting someone pregnant or if you're the woman you don't trust a guy who says mm -hmm. he's been tested recently which mm -hmm. you shouldn't mm -hmm. Always, with someone who you're not exclusive with, always insist on protection, whether you're the woman or the man. Bing bong. Okay. Yep. Hey, Chris and Matt. My name is Marta. I'm 30 years old Hi, and I live in Brooklyn. Cool. And unfortunately, I need some help with a stranger danger problem. Oh, no. <laughs> um, a little background. I have a volunteer job that I do Tuesday mornings. I um, feed a colony of stray cats. Cool. I know your dog people. Apologies. <laughs> um, and there's been this man that's been showing up um, to the place every Tuesday morning when I'm there for like about a month. And he just asks me the same questions over and over again. And I feel like I've been pretty like polite about it. I've been like, uh -huh, okay. Um, yeah, he asks me, what am, what am I doing? Uh oh, how many of the cats do I own? Which oh, man. I don't own any of them. They're wild. Um, and does all the food get eaten? Which wow. arguably is the weirdest question out of all of them. Mm. So I don't really know what to do. Should I like ignore him? Should I? No. I don't know. Should I spin move? Matt, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, obviously he's crazy, right? Yes. What do I do? Uh, I bring somebody next time. Bring somebody, whether that's a, a, a girlfriend or a man, bring somebody and have that person say something to that person. Because a, it's a situation that could get hairy if you are... If, it, it could go sideways in a number of ways with a crazy person. So you bring someone as as like a buffer, as protection, but also to be the person to be like... Create some kind of like... Uh, pushback like why are you what she says you ask questions all the if it's a guy he should just be like what do you why do you ask the same her the same questions every week like she told me about you I, I, like what what is that about or something you know mm. it, i think you bring somebody uh at least once maybe twice in a row because if you confront the guy the first time you want to make sure that you're protected the next time you go unfortunately in any city you know you're in brooklyn i used to live in new york there's a number of scenarios where there's just a crazy guy who gets in the way all the time. I used to live downtown and there was a, a really crazy guy who used to pretend like he worked in the parking lot that I parked my car in and he was just a crazy guy. He would like ask if I wanted to get my like windshield clean or like whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, at a certain point I was like, you don't work here. You did. I know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what did I, he say? I know you don't work here he was he i don't even remember what he said it wasn't even the point like he was a crazy guy mm. you know it didn't matter uh what i said he was going to keep doing what he was doing but uh you know i'm a six foot one man mm -hmm, yeah. and that's that's an immediate difference right there i think you should bring bring a guy mm -hmm. at least bring a friend of to, some yeah. kind yeah you absolutely have to there's no question yeah it, you never know what the fuck could happen if yeah. people are crazy yeah yeah a hundred percent yeah all right nothing i mean I agree with you. Okay. Like, there's nothing else to say, but fucking, you got to be careful. Yeah, and bring a, bring a friend to confront the person. Or bring a friend and you confront him when the friend is there. So you have, like, backup. 
that's good too. But I still think you're the the the, the big guy doing. It. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every chick has a big guy friend. Yeah. Um, I'll be quick. An expert and snowboarder. Concise. Um, I recently got out of a long-term relationship about a little over a year, and I have completely forgotten how to speak to women. Yeah, get it. Um, got it. Got it. Zero game. No play whatsoever. Um, advice, yeah. tactics, anything, please. Yeah, thank tactics. you. First of all, stop thinking about that because, like, I agree. every day is a new day. Every interaction is a new mm. interaction. You know, mm -hmm. you could be fucking, you know, the nutty professor in one instance, and then you're Lothario the next. Like, yeah. every day is a clean slate. Every person is a clean slate. Yeah. Just don't be a jerk and don't be uh, insecure. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know what i mean like th there's a b vast territory between those two things you don't need any mm -hmm. skills there's any any anybody that's out there being like i know how to pick up girls is is an absolute like huckster right those people are mm -hmm. full of shit and because it's it's like there is no one size fits all thing it also that's like belittling to everyone involved it's like as if there's like a, a trick you can pull on women to make them want to have sex with you like this is yeah this is not uh, remotely true first of all yeah. and second of all like doesn't everybody know that that's not true by now anyway not, uh, not to say that's what yeah, that yeah, guy's yeah. saying but like i don't think there is or i know that there is not uh a right thing to do in terms of like getting women it's just like you, you, see, you go ahead i mean it's always be you yeah you gotta be you yeah because well, eventually anyway they're gonna discover who you yeah. are so yeah so sure. be open and honest and say hey look you know uh i i've been in a relationship for by the way how long a year he said he's been out of it for about a year yeah oh okay he's out of it for a year and i he's think still that's not. what he said yeah yeah um and also put yourself into situations that will help you figure it out like go to a place that where you approach someone and talk to them you'll get better at it and you'll get a thicker skin for sure also definitely definitely this might be the most important but be easy on yourself yeah 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 as long sure. as you're not being a jerk yep and like getting drinks thrown in your face or getting eyes rolled at you. Like as long as you're not being mean or negging, which I'm assuming this guy is and he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he does. Uh, but don't take it personally. Don't be hard on yourself. Not everybody likes everybody. Like it's just like one of those things. You could be on a bad streak. You could be approaching the wrong people. Mm -hmm. I highly doubt it has to do with the way you're approaching people, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Unless, again, you're getting in your own head. Yeah, you'd be, that sounds what it's like. that's the thing you got to stop but doing. But there's no tips and tactics except for just be yourself. That, and that's, every, re, just remember that every time you approach someone in this way, it's you have a clean slate. They don't remember the dumb thing you said to the person la the, the other the last couple weeks, a couple weeks ago. Like, they weren't there. You are a new person to this new person. Mm-hmm. You are new to yes, them. true. You're not new to you. You're the same old idiot to yourself. Yes. Everybody's the same old idiot to themselves. Yes. But to the person that you're meeting right now, right in front of you, yeah. you're new to them. Give yourself a fucking break, yeah, dude. Yeah. Give yourself a break. Yeah. Be you. Give yourself a break. Those are the two things. 100%. Okay. And also, congratulations on your snowboarding that you obviously Yeah. Did. Congratulations on all the trophies you won. All right, cool. You, you want to do one more? Yeah, I guess. All right, cool. Falling. Hey guys, Lulu from New York City here. What's Got up? my flannel on in the background, as always. Can't see. Sure. Chris, I'm a long time baby. Matt, big fan of your work. Watched American Animal recently. Very oh, dope. hell yeah. My question for you both is how do you manage anxiety when you're sort of in the public eye? Um, I'm a musician, performer. Uh, I go on stage a lot. I'm getting kind of well known for what I do, cool. but I deal with panic attacks. Um, I struggle with like, OCD. Chris, I know, same for you. Um, you know, just when you're panicking and have to be on stage or in front of people, it can be really scary. I'm in therapy. Uh, of course, it's helpful. Hashtag betterhelp.com, but not always the advice I'm looking for. So I guess as two um, successful dudes with careers and families and whatnot, and who survived, um, you know, almost blacking out on a plane, how uh, you manage anxiety when you're either on stage or in front of or behind a camera. I'm also a licensed psychotherapist, so sometimes it's hard to give myself my own advice, sit deeper, whatever. Anyway, that's it. Love you guys. Chris, see you February 18th. Matt, you got beautiful hands. All right, bye. Nice York. say that is February that a thing 18th, new york uh yeah it's weird too especially since i have some too but no no, no. i have beautiful hands she see? said hmm. people say that about you huh i mean yeah i mean i i think well do you get it or not i get it a lot since we started doing this better than mine
I mean, my hands look way better than yours. Oh, okay. But well. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can speak better to this than I can, but I, I don't like, I mean, I don't mind like being recognized mm -hmm. because everybody who recognizes me is generally very nice to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they know who I am because they're a fan of one thing or another. Mm -hmm. But I generally share your anxiety uh, and I'm a fucking hermit. Okay, your turn. That's my solution, but that's yeah. not a good solution. So, it's tough. I yeah. mean, look, you know, it's all about the work, right? You're a singer and uh, part of the reason why you're good at what you do is because of this stuff. You're very sensitive and the OCD is about control and you want to try and control the situation and you can't. And I get that. Uh, I live that way as well. And um, I think that what you got to do is just, well, first of all, there are things you can do for like OCD and there's behavioral therapy and there is a, brain, a book called Brain Lock. That's really good if you look it up um, and, you, and you get it. But but you know dealing with this stuff and dealing with it in your career uh we're in an age now where you can just kind of be transparent and and talk about it too you can write a song about it you can fuel your work so you know i understand the the feeling shame about it trust me and i understand the hardship of it but you can just use it to actually fuel yourself and make you a better person and make yourself a better artist so uh you know it's not you, the OCD and the panic attacks, but it's a part of your makeup and and that's okay. And you can get through it. Uh, Remember that it's your brain, but you didn't ask for it and you certainly didn't design it. So mm -hmm. it's a part of you. And as artists or as an artist in your case, just sort of like, if you can, the ideal thing is to fold it in to your persona and your work if possible mm -hmm. and that is not just being open about it but as chris is saying uh you said she's a singer that's what she said I oh, think. okay yeah. uh yeah making music about it not like on the nose but yeah like, yeah, yeah i have ocd <laughs> but yeah uh, yeah actually that would be good think yeah, about that, that. Would be cool. that'd be amazing um but uh yeah I think that there are a number of ways of dealing with it through the work yeah and through the persona that you're creating uh for the public just yeah. love yourself man you know You're talking to me be okay with it yeah no okay be okay with it you're okay you're okay and don't don't uh don't kill yourself over it you're, oh, you're, man, you're you a know? good person well i mean i mean i mean that i don't mean that actually. no i know yeah yeah, yeah. colloquially yeah. i got you yep. okay all right well thanks for listening uh you can go to chrislea.com i'm gonna be in san diego tonight chrislea.com i'll be in new york february 18th i'll see that uh lovely lady there um in, at the beacon theater and i will be in chicago i will be in Portland and Daytona and Seattle, a bunch of places, chrislea.com, Brea Improv. I will be doing dates there in California. Uh, let me know. One-on-one -on -one sessions with me, uh, Dwayne Pride. Go get your session, uh, book them at mattalia.com. Uh, tickets for him is chrislea.com. Uh, and yeah, uh, oh, the Lifeline merch, my lifelinemerch.com. Get it. Keep yourself warm. Look good. Make everybody happy. Buy it for everybody that you've ever met. And we're all good. Fuck yeah, dude. Thanks, guys.